This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I want to teach you how to create infinite Bitcoin wallets. Well, maybe not infinite, but here's still a really cool way to extend your hardware wallet. So we're sort of continuing this series that we've been doing over the past few days. You have a backup to your hardware wallet, which is usually a 12 word recovery seed or 24 word recovery seed. And you may sometimes hear these referred to as a mnemonic seed or a seed or recovery phrase or a backup. They're all the same thing. It's basically a human readable version of your hardware wallet's private keys of its master uh, master private key. And it looks something like this. It's 12 English words in a certain order. If you change the order, it's a completely different recovery seed. These 12 words do need to be picked by the random number generator in your hardware wallet. So don't attempt to pick your own words from the BIP39 library, which I'll show you in a minute. Also, people have asked 12 words is plenty. You don't need to use 12, uh, 24 words, though some wallets do make 24 words the standard, but 12 words is sufficient security. If you have 12 words, uh, a 12 word recovery seed, that means they're two to the 128th possible recovery seeds when accounting for the checksum, which I'm not gonna go into here. And you can see what number this is. It's a very, very large number. It's um, no one is going to guess your 12 words is the good news. This is the BIP39 library. The main version is the English version but I just realized, I hadn't realized it before, that there are different versions for a lot of major languages. Uh, there's two Chinese versions here, the Simplify and Traditional, there's French, there's Italian, there's Japanese and Korean, etc. But I'd say the English is the standard version. These are 2,048 words, and these are the words that your hardware wallet selects from and then puts the words in a certain a certain order they're generated randomly as we said so don't don't go through this library and pick 12 words that will not be random enough and someone will be able to brute force your recovery seed so what we're going to be talking about in this video is something called the passphrase and the passphrase is just a word or a series of words that's added to your recovery seed in order to create a completely new wallet that has its own transaction history has its own bitcoin addresses in fact, your 12 word recovery seed when used alone is actually a passphrase wallet with the passphrase part of it left blank. So if you have your 12 word recovery seed and you add the number one to it, that, that creates a completely new wallet. If you add the number two to it, it creates a completely new wallet. If you add a word like corn, that's a completely new wallet. Corn all lowercase, corn with a capital letter at the beginning of the word, or corn all capital letters. These are all completely different Bitcoin wallets, each with their own transaction histories. And when you open up your hardware wallet, you'll usually need to enter that recovery seed at the uh, I'm sorry, you'll need to enter the passphrase at the time in order to access that wallet. And the passphrase is never stored on a hardware device. So here's how to create separate Bitcoin wallets. For example, for your kids, for your business on the same hardware wallet, you could have a, your 12 word recovery seed plus Eric. If your two kids are named Eric and Susan, one could be you add Eric as a passphrase. The other one you could be you add Susan, and then you could have the wallet without the passphrase, just the 12 word recovery seed. That would be its own wallet as well. You have to be careful doing this because if you were to add capital E Eric, that would be a completely different wallet from lowercase e Eric. Another way of using a passphrase is you could send all your KYC Bitcoin holdings to one passphrase wallet and all your non-KYC Bitcoin holdings to another passphrase wallet. KYC again is just Bitcoin that has your personal information associated with it because you bought it, for example, on a crypto exchange. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help out the channel by subscribing. That really helps this channel's reach. Hit the like button, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future topic, and also share this video with a friend or family member. Now the passphrase that's added to your 12 word recovery seed, it can be up to 50 characters long. It's case sensitive and spaces count. So these are all completely different passphrases. Passphrase is capital P, passphrase, lowercase p, passphrase, passphrase with a space in the middle, passphrase with a hyphen in the middle. This would create four different wallets. Now using passphrases makes it possible to generate approximately 5.9 times 10 to the 197 different wallets based on your original seed word. So this is not infinite Bitcoin wallets, as we said at the beginning, but close enough in human terms. This is an enormous number that's greater than the number of known atoms in the known universe. Passphrases can also be used to hide your Bitcoin 
holdings even further. So you can use them to generate a number of decoy wallets. So for example, you could have a decoy wallet, which is just your 12 words, your regular hardware wallet, and maybe you put uh, 0 0.01 Bitcoin in that. And then you have a real wallet that has your big Bitcoin holdings, and that would be 12 words plus your passphrase of choice, and maybe you put one Bitcoin in that. So if someone, if you're attacked by someone or someone gets a hold of your hardware wallet, they'll be able to access the 0 0.01 Bitcoin, but unless they know your passphrase, they'll never be able to access the, the, uh, your, your larger holdings of Bitcoin. Or you could make a, a number of decoy wallets. You could have the first dec decoy wallet be no passphrase, and you put put 0 0.01 Bitcoin in there and the next decoy wallet, because maybe the thief knows about these decoy wallets. So he says, give me your passphrase. You give him your passphrase and that wallet has 0.1 Bitcoin in it. And then your real wallet that has uh, 12 words plus a different passphrase, passphrase B, that would have your full Bitcoin in that. So there are many, many different variations you can do here and personal circumstances are all different. Another nice thing about passphrases is they allow you to, it's still extremely important to store your recovery seed, your 12 words in a safe place. You can store them on metal as we talked about uh, a couple days ago. You stamp them on metal to help protect them against if your house is flooded or catches on fire. The nice thing is if you're using a passphrase, if someone comes across one of these metal plates, and again, you should keep it really hidden, but if they were to come across it, they would not be able to access your Bitcoin that's in the passphrase wallet or passphrase wallets in this unless they knew your passphrase. Now they could try to brute force it. Maybe they'd create a passphrase wallet using your name or using the word Bitcoin or something like that. So given enough time, things can be brute force, but this is, this is really another layer of protection using a passphrase. I'm going to link in the description notes below to this article about how to add a, a, a passphrase to the Blockstream Jade, which is the hardware wallet we've been covering on this channel. How to pick a passphrase for yourself. One way of doing it is to pick four to six English words or whatever language you have and then string them together. You could string them together all uppercase or all lowercase or spaces between the words. Whatever you do, just make it consistent and easy for you to remember. The reason to pick four to six words, I'd say any shorter than that, and it would be easier to brute force your passphrase. If someone has your 12 words or has your wallet, they could enter a bunch of different passphrases. Any longer than four to six word passphrase, and it may be difficult to memorize or you may make other mistakes. So for example, a passphrase, and please don't use this, and I'm obviously not using it, but you could say Bitcoin University YouTube channel. Anything with Bitcoin probably isn't very uh, secure because people are going to try using the word Bitcoin in various ways, but this would be an example of a passphrase. And as long as no one had my 12-word recovery seed, that's the really hard thing. That's the thing that's impossible to brute force. And so that's where your real protection is. But the passphrase, as we said, adds another layer of protection. Store your passphrase in a completely different location from your 12 word recovery seed. You can try just keeping your passphrase memorized, but I think this is quite dangerous if you get hit in the head or die suddenly or something like this. And the human brain is a very fragile thing, even in young, healthy people, you can certainly forget things. So it's probably a good idea to have a written down version of your passphrase stored somewhere. Just be sure to store it in a completely different location. You may want to stamp it in the metal like you do with your recovery seed. So it's not going to be destroyed by water or moths or by fire. Your 12 word recovery seed should never, this is your, your 12 word recovery seed. It should never be entered online as we've talked about in yesterday's video. It should never be uploaded digitally to the cloud or sent in an email or text or photographed, etc. But I'd say it is safe to store your passphrase, not your 12 word recovery seed, but your passphrase. It is safe to store it in something like an end to end encrypted password manager like Bitwarden, even if you have some sort of leak with your browser or with Bitwarden, unless someone has your 12 word recovery seed, they won't be able to use this passphrase in any way. So you have to think about your own situation. If someone has your 12 word recovery seed, as we said, though, they can attempt to brute force your passphrase wallet. So don't just use Bitcoin, for example, as your passphrase. Don't use your name as your passphrase. Don't use anything obvious as your passphrase that someone may be able to to guess, for example, like the city you live in or something like that. Here's another cool fact. Passphrases are never stored on a hardware wallet, but need to be entered every time. This gives you additional security if your hardware wallet were to be stolen or compromised. Also, if you mistype your passphrase, 
you've just created a brand new wallet. So for example, capital Eric or lowercase Eric, as we talked about before. So be very careful with this. There's no such thing as a wrong passphrase. If you make a mistake in your passphrase, you will create an entirely new wallet. So I think it's important to always send a small test Bitcoin transaction to make sure that you have your 12 word recovery seed and passphrase correct. What you should do is set up your recovery seed and passphrase, send a very, very small amount of Bitcoin there, wipe the wallet and try to reconstitute it and see if your Bitcoin's there. That way you can be sure that you have the correct recovery seed and passphrase. Here's another use for a passphrase. You could consider using it in inheritance planning as well. For example, you give your passphrase to your child or your descendants. You give your 12 word recovery seed to a trusted relative or lawyer or accountant in a sealed bag. Now, again, if someone has your 12 word recovery seed and they're a hacker, they could attempt to brute force your passphrase. So you only want to do this to someone you really trust and you probably want to put it in a sealed bank bag, as we talked about yesterday. In this case, both your child and your lawyer or accountant would need to collude while you're still alive to take your Bitcoin. And again, everyone's circumstances are completely different. So readjust all of the suggestions I've made in this video and adjust them to your own personal circumstances. If you'd enjoyed this video, I'd also encourage you to check out my paid Bitcoin course in the private Bitcoin forum. People have been telling me that I don't shell this often enough, and I figure it's Christmas time, it's the holidays, might as well shell it. These are all available at Bitcoin University Premium, both the Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin course, the private Bitcoin forum, where we've been having some very interesting discussions. And so if you're interested in joining this and you want to help to support the channel in this way, I'll put a link in the description notes below and you can take a look at the different courses here. And then if you're ready to join, you can just go to the join tab. If you wanna pay in fiat, if you wanna pay using Bitcoin, either on chain or lightning, you can click here and pay with Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.